My name is Ashley Houghton. Uh, thank you all very much for coming. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to capitalize on the e-commerce boom that we're kind of all experiencing with site search and merchandising. Uh, my name uh, again is Ashley. I've been with Search Spring for about six years. Uh, previous to that, I had a um, pretty extensive uh, in-person retail experience. Um, and with Search Spring, initially I kind of started and built our customer success team, which we really identify as kind of the consultants to our retailers. Um, and then through that, I moved on to the product team. So uh, what I do now is I kind of help design the product um, to best kind of help retailers like you. Um, and uh, in doing so, we want to make sure that our retailers are more successful, ultimately um, getting the most out of search ring in their entire uh, e-commerce experience. Let's start off uh, by looking at the current state of e-commerce. So e-commerce has experienced 10 years of growth in just 90 days of 2020. Uh, shoppers have long preferred the end uh, person experience uh, that we're now forced to shop online. And so this has big, been a big win for the e-commerce world. 75% uh, of US customers have tried new brands for the first time during COVID-19 and 60% of them plan to keep shopping from these new brands. Um, so with more customers shopping online more than ever before, the demand has certainly increased. Uh, but with that demand comes a heightened shopper expectation. And so to capitalize on this exponential growth of 20 uh, e-commerce growth in 2020, your store needs to stand out from the competition. And can your store keep up with this level of growth? Uh, and did you know by the end of 2020, customer experience will overtake price and product as the key brand differentiator? Uh, if you think of the option of going to Home Depot or Lowe's, typically you'll choose the store that has the better product offering and customer service. So we want to take that personal in-person experience and translate it to the online world. And a lot of you might ask, why does it matter and what impact does it have? Um, US customers, 65% of them find a positive experience with a brand to be more influential than great advertising. So again, getting your brand out there is the first step. But once shoppers are at your store, what are you doing to keep them there and to keep them coming back time after time? So that leads us now kind of where should we start? Um, now that we've walked through the e-commerce landscape and know a bit about uh, site search and merchandising, let's walk through the steps where we can start optimizing the site. First, we kind of start by asking ourselves, what makes your store stand out? So there's hundreds and thousands of online stores to choose from. I mean, we have mom and pop shops to Amazon and kind of everything in between. Um, and as I mentioned, it's no longer as simple as having the best price. It, it doesn't stop there any longer. Um, they want the customized in-person shopping experience that's intuitive and easy from the comfort of their living room. Also starting by knowing your audience and what is important to your audience. Um, this should influence your general e-commerce strategy. To stand out, you'll also need to take in your audience into account. And with more people shopping online this year, your demographics could be changing. Imagine two e-commerce stores selling the exact same products with the exact same prices. I can tell you that their merchandising strategies are likely very different. Your strategy should align with the demographic and needs of your shoppers. In fact, I have um, many retailers who are owned by the same company, have the exact same products, the exact same um, uh, data and everything kind of in between and the way that they merchandise to their two demographics is totally different. Um, so it's really important to get to know your audience. Uh, and for example, kind of a few general things to take into consideration. New customers usually want to see more of your proven and best selling products while returning users might want to see more of kind of what's hot, what's new, what's trending. Um, and then kind of think about if reviews are an important part in the buying and decision-making process. Consider boosting products that have good ratings with a high number of reviews. Um, think about how influential ratings are in retail verticals like health, beauty, apparel, power tools, kind of especially when you don't get the ability um, to, to see these products in person, to kind of feel them, to understand the quality, things like that. Um, and if your shoppers are price sensitive, don't elevate the most expensive products to the top of the results. Uh, making it easier on the customer and aligning to what they're kind of looking for 
will result in a higher conversion and less friction throughout the buying process. So what role does site search play? And I emphasize a lot on site search because um, many retailers overlook the power of search in driving conversions and revenue. And that's typically because a relatively small number of shoppers engage with the search bar. Um, on average, about five to 15% of your overall traffic will engage with search. Um, and when I'm, when I'm consulting with uh, e-commerce retailers, they'll say, you know, seven or 10% of my shoppers are using search. I don't want to invest in that 10%. I'd rather do something to invest in that 90%. But people who, are, who search are far more motivated. Uh, they tend to convert at least 400% higher than someone who um, identifies products through browsing through categories or some other way outside of search. And on average for search spring, uh, our customers' uh, sites, they see about 7% uh, users using site search, and it accounts for generally at least 28% of their overall total online revenue. Um, so by investing in search, you're really going to have an impact on conversion and revenue. And pro by providing accurate results, you can guide the shopper to check out extremely quickly with less friction. Um, and on the alternative, if you provide a poor search experience, you're going to frustrate that visitor and they'll likely take their business to a competitor that does invest search. Um, I always kind of say time is money. Um, most, most general shoppers don't make it past page two uh, about less than 10% make it past page two. So ensuring that you're getting those right products most importantly on page one or shortly thereafter um, is imperative to the business. Um, and I always kind of say with, you know, Google is now the expectation of search. Um, Google obviously performs well. It has far dominated the market for many, many years. So that is a customer's expectation when they are conducting search. So if you're not um, in line with that and providing a relevant search experience, your customers will find someone that is. Next, we're going to talk about analyzing and leveraging the data. Um, I can't stress enough that I always like to say the proof is in the pudding, but the proof is in the data. Really, anything that you need to know is going to be answered through these data points. Um, you'll want to look at how your shoppers are engaging with your store. Look at what they're searching for, what categories are most important to them and what they're frequenting the most. Um, the terminology that they use is so important um, and how they interact with those filters and sorting options. Um, oftentimes, you know, I get e-commerce stores that don't necessarily know where to start from a strategy. Um, and, and really, if you're kind of clueless at, at that point, where you might start is, what are they filtering on and what are they sorting on? Um, if you see you know, that they're constantly sorting on newest products, uh, that might be a great indication that new arrivals is important and they're probably gonna be more of your repeating shoppers. Um, but a lot of these kind of just uncover some of those basics. You know, I know uh, I tend to focus on reviews, the average customer review. That's a great indication of, okay, elevating products that have higher reviews might take away the need for someone to kind of sort based on that. And we're gonna giving that to them without forcing the user to make extra clicks. Um, don't also forget about kind of basics in your merchandising strategy, like inventory status, if it's on sale or not. Um, and especially right now, competitive shipping, I think is really important. Um, and then one important caveat to mention here is that um, you wanna make sure that, you know, as we're recommending to leverage sorting and filtering options, Ensure this data is complete throughout your product catalog and that you're not missing valuable data points. Um, for example, if you're offering a color filter, ensure that all applicable products have that color data assigned. Otherwise, a feature like filtering can have the inverse effect if uh, you know, only half of your products are tagged with a color. Um, those would be products that the customers are then now missing out on. Um, and likewise, if you're still early in the process of obtaining reviews, it might be best to hold off on leveraging that data as a filter or a sorting option until it can provide more value. It's also important not to focus on a single metric. 
Um, I see this a lot where someone only focuses on conversion or only focuses on exit rate, only focuses on clicks. Uh, it goes so much more than that. All these variables kind of tell a story. Um, and just because a product has high clicks does not mean it's a high performer. Um, and wasting that real estate above the fold for an overexposed product is a no-no. Um, analyzing metrics such as exit rate and bounce rate, conversion rates, click rates, page depth, those will help paint the overall picture of how a search result page or a category page is ultimately performing. And I always kind of say identifying both of what's performing well and what isn't, um, understanding why a page or product is performing well is sometimes the key to understanding why a page isn't. Um, so while you know we kind of say if it's not broke, don't fix it, it is important to understand why a page might be performing well and that would kind of help improve um, the experience uh, through pages that aren't. And in analyzing your data, you'll probably find a lot of opportunities for synonyms and redirects. Uh, taxonomy and descriptors of products are not universal throughout any industry. So what you might call a fuzzy boot, another person might call a furry boot. Uh, so it's important to kind of cover all of those bases and give your shoppers multiple ways to find the product that they're looking for. As you can see uh, through this example on Just Fab, a search for furry boots also provides results for fuzzy boots um, and anything in between. I can't tell you how many different ways people search for fuzzy, furry, um, faux fur, et cetera, types of boots. Um, and, and this is just particular to this product, but kind of think about everything. Um, you know, uh, in the past, a dress store might have, you know, cocktail dresses and evening gown dresses. And kind of now in the world, uh, people are searching for a little black dress or a party dress or a Vegas dress, kind of things along those lines. So instead of having this kind of really proper categorization and taxonomy, think about talking about your products more like the average user would, would shop for them and um, include those in keywords and synonyms and things like that. Um, and then to talk about redirects, typically search doesn't power content and CMS pages like shipping, FAQs, returns, blogs. Uh, however, customers tend to leverage a search bar for locating these pages very frequently. Um, and with implementing redirects for these types of queries, this helps the customer get to the page they're trying to locate quickly without frustration. Um, and while it might be common knowledge for people like you and me that, that a page like this typically lives in the footer, I can tell you that that is absolutely not the norm for the everyday shopper. Um, and one of the biggest points I can harp on is anything that you think is obvious probably is not. Next, we're going to talk about autocomplete. Um, there's lots of different ways to dis uh, describe autocomplete uh, at Search Spring. We, we call it autocomplete here, but it can be called type ahead, autocomplete, search drop down, et cetera. Um, but ultimately, this is the module that displays when you start to type something into the search bar. Uh, and this is beneficial for a lot of reasons. Um, oftentimes, kind of going back to that taxonomy and categorization, uh, customers don't know what a product is actually called. Um, you know, sometimes uh, a search for a kitchen jar, someone might call it a kitchen canister. I ran into that specific example um, sometime frequently and, and do so. Um, many other examples all of the time. So um, a user might start typing in a brand name or a generic product type. And with that, we want to give them suggestions as to what the next steps are, whether it's uh, related terms or related products. Um, and in that, um, they might understand, OK, this is, you know, I'm looking for this particular brand and I'm looking for um, shoes or I might be looking for this particular product. And, oh, this is the name. So I might continue my search query. Um, and autocomplete isn't just for product discovery either. It's also really beneficial for spell correction. Um, and there are different types of autocomplete that actually have a true spell correction built in. But even for the ones that don't, it really does help the user with spelling. Um, so users might start to type in the first few characters of a word that they might not know how to spell correctly. Um, and then once they see those suggestions in the drop down, they'll kind of let autocomplete take over the rest and press enter. Um, in the example shown here, this is an option with spell correction enabled, but um, a customer is searching for a divot, they're clearly misspelling it, um, and autocomplete guides the user to the correct spelling um, and also gives them relevant 
uh, terms associated with Divot as well as relevant products associated with Divot. Um, and shoppers who click a product directly from Autocomplete convert 200% more than those that simply press enter after a search. So earlier I mentioned shoppers that use search convert 400% higher. That 200% is on top of that 400%. So showing those products in Autocomplete is uh, very beneficial from a conversion standpoint as well. So we just walked through some site search uh, best practices, how to make that search bar more valuable uh, as a tool to your shoppers. Now uh, we'll move into e-commerce merchandising. And so e-commerce merchandising takes those search results, category pages, and overall shopping experience to the next level. Uh, it's not just about delivering relevant results. Uh, merchandising gives you the control over which products are displayed and in what order. It also gives you the power to add visual promotions to product pages, curated targeted landing pages uh, to, to send shoppers to. And so e-commerce merchandising means something a little bit different for everybody, uh, and rightfully so. I've always kind of said relevancy is in the eye of the beholder. Um, your e-commerce strategy should be influenced by your business and your customers. But broadly speaking, it's about getting the right product in front of the right person at the right time, um, which sounds easy enough, right? Um, automated site merchandising, and I put a large emphasis on the automation part. Um, you don't have to hire a full team of merchandisers to achieve a fully merchandised and relevant experience. Um, by automating roles, you can showcase products that currently meet those business objectives, as well as getting the right product in front of the customer. Automated merchandising is broken down into a few parts. Um, so we'll start here with promoting or elevating the right products. Um, the products you choose to boost will depend on your retail vertical, your demographic, trends, and seasonality. Um, newest and best selling products are always popular to boost, but you shouldn't stop there. Um, you should also take current shopping behaviors, trends, upcoming holidays into consideration. So considering promoting products that qualify for also maybe in-store pickup, fast shipping, for example. Um, for seasonality, a home decor retailer might align products that resonate with fall or Halloween or Christmas. Um, an apparel retailer might be currently promoting their fall line um, or cozy styles. I can tell you that in the past six or eight months, um, I'm seeing a lot less um, kind of high heels and fancy dresses, but a lot more of kind of that athleisure wear uh, normally. As you can see in this particular example, um, if someone searches for face masks, you know, there might be clay face masks, cotton masks, um, toning face masks. But with this kind of day and age, if someone's searching for a face mask, they're probably looking for a face mask covering. Um, so here's um, a great idea to elevate those particular products that are more in line with the current state of the market, as well as promoting the ones that are be better selling over others. And then uh, grouping the right products together. So displaying similar related matching products together um, can be an intuitive way to cross sell certain items within a product listing page. So sometimes this is done through product recommendations, but it also can be done through the product listing page um, or you know something like new arrivals, grouping those uh, similar products together. Uh, think for example, a bikini top and a bikini bottom. We want to ensure those matching pieces are together um, not only can the simple tactic increase the average order value, but it can also minimize the customer's need uh, to continue to search and refine. Um, and you know, on a new arrivals page, like I mentioned, um, if there's both you know women's and men's products, it might be best to group together women's products followed by men's or vice versa, um, just so the customer doesn't have to uh, constantly you know look over each individual product to find what's applicable to them. Um, and, you know, of course, there's always options like filtering, but typically the user is going to scroll the page first and then filter if um, the products aren't aggregated or displayed in an order in which they prefer. Um, and while it might seem obvious that certain products should be grouped together, um, some retailers don't have this ability and some just often overlook this need. Uh, next, we'll talk about demoting the right products. So while promoting products is important, um, demoting products is also uh, equally, if not more important. 
Um, you've heard me talk about out of, out of stock a few times here, but I, I harp on that because you have no idea how many category or search result pages that are flooded with out of stock items on the first page. Um, this is um, a huge disservice to the end user and to the customer um, because ultimately they can't do anything with those products. Um, well, out of stock is kind of a no brainer and pushing down to the bottom. Um, products with limited size inventory or products on back order aren't ideal to show above the folder on the first page either. Um, other examples might include pushing down products that don't have a thumbnail image yet or that have recently become out of season. Um, you know, once we we move past Halloween, we're not going to be wanting to promote Halloween products. We're going to kind of move right on to, to Thanksgiving and other holidays. Um, in the example here, this category page includes both swimwear and swim accessories. So with these automated rules, it's easy to push the actual swimwear to the top, followed by accessories after that, and then out of stock and waitlist products towards the end of the results. Also worth mentioning badging those products too, so that the customer doesn't have to click into the product and be frustrated when it's not available. Um, lastly, we'll kind of talk about leveraging banners. Um, banners are a great way to highlight special offers and promotions. Um, they also aid in telling um, the customer a story or providing useful content to those products on that page. Um, banners can also be useful for brand pages uh, to further enhance that brand image. Um, common offers used in uh, banners include free shipping, buy one, get one, seasonal discounts, links to curated landing pages, just to kind of remind the user um, what they have available to them and kind of further um, encourage them to make a purchase. Um, this is a great way to give shopper visual cues and keep them engaged. Um, this can also help keep the brands that you work with happy. Um, oftentimes I do see retailers that work with particular brands, um, you know, receive discounts on invoice or kind of things like that when they, you know, highlight their brand image or they highlight those brands products. So lots of um, ways to kind of get creative with uh, merchandising and banners. Those are just a few examples. Um, so with that, uh, we have a few key takeaways here. Um, in order to capitalize on e-commerce growth, um, you'll want to stand out by providing your shoppers the best online shopping experience. Your product offering and prices are no longer enough to differentiate your brand from the competition. Um, use these learnings from data and performance to make improvements in the shopping experience while continuously raising the bar. Um, don't overlook the power of a search bar. A search bar that produces accurate results uh, can guide the shopper to the checkout extremely quickly um, at, at at least 400% more than those that don't use site search. Um, and it's important to constantly review the data and trends to make sure your strategy aligns with these changes. Use these learnings to improve the shopping experience and set the standard of what the online uh, experience should be. And don't make this harder than it has to be. Equip yourself with the tools needed to make this easy. Um, again, this isn't, you know, hiring a full team of merchandisers or a staff to, to build a search uh, internally. Um, leverage kind of rule-based merchandising to ensure that merchandising is up to date and that key components are being utilized. Um, this also allows for big sweeping changes in a strategy with just a few clicks. Uh, and then lastly, kind of rinse and repeat. This never stops. This, we kind of go through this and start over all the time. Um, it's important to iterate on your, on your approach. I can tell you that nobody thought that toilet paper would be one of the best selling products of 2020. Um, and just a little bit about search bring, what we do. Uh, we essentially provide intelligent site search and merchandising solutions for e-commerce stores. Um, as you can see, we focus on multiple aspects, but we ultimately help optimize your search and category pages. Um, I kind of mentioned earlier that relevancy is in the eye of the beholder. Um, if someone's searching for a dress and there's 200 dresses, you know, it, it, it's not enough that the dresses are showing first. We have to show the right dresses, right? Either that's the best selling or the newest or the trendiest or the trending colors. Um, or maybe a mixture of all of those things, right? Um, we ultimately customize your entire site um, and the way products are shown to help you leverage banners, badges, product recommendations, reviews, while highlighting um, certain products and categories. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, your site data is so valuable um, to help you make these decisions. So we do have 
um, our own internal team of customer success experts. Um, I kind of look at them as the consultants for all of the online retailers. They're the ones that kind of see this data day in and day out, um, help identify trends, help identify low hanging fruit opportunities for improvement. Um, SearchSpring does have its own analytics suite, um, as well as um, the direct integration with Google Analytics to kind of help uh, connect the dots between all of these sources of data to be able to give you these insights to help make decisions. Um, and lastly, we're platform agnostic. So we don't work with one particular platform, but um, have worked with just about um, everyone to, you know, ASP.NET, custom platform, Shopify, Magento, kind of everything in between. Um, and here's just a few things that um, our search spring customers have said about us. So again, our goal is to really make things easy for the customer and for the merchant. Um, we're always looking to help support our clients to ensure they're getting the most out of the platform. Um, the feedback we receive from our customers on G2 kind of confirm this. Uh, we were recently honored to be named a momentum leader in the e-commerce merchandising software category in G2's uh, fall report, along with badges on best support, easiest admin, and easiest setup. Um, I can say that in all my years of search spring, our service and support is kind of bar none. So um, not only are they quick and speedy, but um, you know, they're smart and they can kind of help you get the most out of your business and optimize these things. So thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, if you have any questions about anything covered in this presentation or just generally about search spring, uh, please visit search springs booth. We'd love to talk to you and learn more. Um, we are currently offering 50% off the integration fee for all e-commerce day attendees. Um, so feel free to capitalize on that opportunity. Um, and for all you merchandisers out there, we do have a podcast you might find interesting. The e-commerce merchandising show is the first podcast that interviews online merchandisers about their field. Um, it's officially launching on October 9th, and you can listen to episodes on Spotify or wherever else you find your podcasts. Uh, to stay tuned, follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter at SearchBrain. Thanks again, everyone, uh, for allowing me to speak today. I look forward to talking to you in the booth.